Today I'm going to show you how to make bias binding, which is great for quilts with curves and quilts with lots of angles that need more stretch than your traditional binding. And today I'm going to show you how to do that using Angela Walter's fragmental panel. So let me show you how to do bias binding. Have your quilt top quilted and then you're gonna trim a quarter inch away from the edge of your design and if you have any inside corners, you're going to clip right almost to a quarter inch in. To determine how much binding you need, I'm gonna take the perimeter of my quilt and add 30 inches. So for my quilt today, I need approximately 150 inches and I'm gonna use two inch wide strips. To cut your bias strips, take your fabric and fold it salvage to salvage. So here's my salvage. Take your Creative Grids ruler, line up your 45 degree angle on your ruler, and we're gonna cut. Then I can save this to get more strips from later. And then I'm gonna cut six inches, four inches, and then two inches. And you're just gonna continue until you have 150 inches. Take your bias binding strips, place them right sides together and line up the top and the edge. You're gonna stitch from corner to corner, cut a quarter inch away, and press open. I've pre-starched my strips with the Quilter Starch Savvy and we're on the wrong side of the fabric here. First, we're gonna fold in a little triangle to start and this is gonna help us when we end the joining later. Press. Then we're gonna place the strips wrong sides together and make sure this point right here matches up. And we're gonna press. And see, when you're working with bias, you can see that it's curving already. So you're just gonna go real slow. Line your strip up just like I have, and this is the triangle tip that we started with when we were pressing. You're gonna have raw edges out. We're gonna leave a long tail, start stitching, back stitch, and we're using a quarter inch seam allowance. So normally I would use gray thread, but today I'm using white so you can see my stitches. You're gonna sew to a quarter inch away from the edge and pivot. Sometimes when I get to the edge, I'll lower my stitch length so I can get exactly a quarter inch away. I'm gonna reverse. Now I'm gonna fold my strip back finger press. You want to make sure you've got an exact line from the edge of the quilt to your binding. And if it's an exact line, you're going to have a perfect fold. Finger press really hard. Pull it back. If you've got a little angle here, you want to push it in. We're going to start stitching the very edge and we're going to keep going until we get to our inner corner to show you that. So now we're coming up on our inner corner right here and you've seen you've already clipped. We're going to stitch directly to this point right here. Now you're directly to that point. You're gonna keep this quilt straight. Pull this, pull this around. But you want this straight because you're trying to do a straight line. So you basically just kind of get this out of your way and have a straight line and just keep sewing.
you're going to continue binding until you get around to where you started and you're going to leave about an eight inch opening and when you end you're going to back stitch so here's your beginning and here's your end you'll pull your beginning back and lay your ending right here if it's longer than this you just want to trim it you're going to pull your triangle point right here a little bit past and put a pin you're going to open this pull your triangle open put your point where your pin is pin in place we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch directly on this line and back stitch at the beginning and the end so you've got this sewn you're going to make sure it fits trim a quarter inch away you're going to press this open and then you're going to start stitching before your last stitches so you're going to cover these stitches stitch all the way down past these stitches to finish I've pressed my binding out I'm going to take my Clover Wonder Clips and clip all the way around the edge so we can do our hand binding. I would normally use Aurifil gray thread, but I'm going to use white so you can see my stitches. And I use black gold clover needles when I'm doing my binding. Now I'm going to show you how to hand bind outer corners and inner corners. So first we're going to be doing our outer corner. You're going to hand stitch up until you get to the point and when you're doing binding if you come out right in the tip even though i'm using white thread you're not going to see my stitches if you are careless and kind of come out here to the edge you are going to see your stitches so hand binding is really a beauty and the more careful you are the nicer it looks and i always think if binding is bad it just ruins the quilt so super particular about doing my binding nice and so you can see right here where your stitches make a 90 degree angle and you're going to stitch right to this point okay so i've stitched right to the point and i'm going to do one more stitch to lock it right in that point now now i'm going to turn that over and you should have a really nice 45 degree angle you're going to just hold this in place turn it over and make it have just as nice of a 45 degree angle on the front you're going to pull it right through the edge at the tip and you're going to keep stitching and next i'm going to show you how to make an inner corner so to make your inner corner you're going to see that you don't have a natural miter first i'm going to cut a little bit out so i've got a little bit more room and it doesn't scrunch up so much i'm going to take my needle create a miter a 45 degree miter right here you're going to push it back and you're going to clip it where you can still sew flip it over you're just going to pull that miter you're going to pull that miter down and it's just a really 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 tiny miter it's only a couple of millimeters in and you're again going to stitch up to the miter and then one lock stitch in place and keep going and I'll show you how pretty it comes out next. And this is how your miter is going to look. It's just a very gentle miter and this is how it looks on the back and they don't always come out perfect. This technique is really useful to know. Like we said, it's great for quilts that have inner and outer corners. It's also great for quilts that have curves around the binding, and it's also great when you have a stripe that's on the straight, but you want it on the diagonal for a great effect. I hope you use this at home, and I'll see you next time.